endocrine disrupting chemicals. How damaging are they really? And not just talking about economic costs as you're about to see in the next study, I'm also talking basically from a human level. Let's begin. Well, let me just, before you begin, let me just give you an idea. One of these chemicals alone, on an annual basis in the United States, is responsible for the loss of at least 11 million IQ points, as well as 43,000 cases of intellectual disability per year. And that is just one of these endocrine disrupting chemicals. But let's get into the research and you can draw your own conclusions. Research is as follows. Public citation title, Exposure to Chemicals Dangerous to Hormone Function Burdens Americans with Hundreds of Billions in Disease Cost. Again, try to keep that economic uh, aspect pushed to the side. Think more about the human toll from a huge scale. Citation title, we're gonna look right at the study parameters and we'll get an idea of how bad these chemicals actually are. Just primarily more for than anything else, convenience. Citation title, exposure is endocrine disrupting chemicals in the USA, a population-based disease burden and cost analysis published in the Lancet Diabetes and Endocrinology this 2016. The study time, they looked at blood samples from about 1999 from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey and they used advanced computer models to extrapolate the data as follows. The endocrine disrupting chemicals that they looked at were as follows, bisphenol A, as a lot of you may be familiar with, in tin cans, plastics, cosmetics, so on and so forth, polychlorinated biphenol, or I should say its cousin, polybrominated diphenyl ether, normally found in flame retardants, furniture, packaging, etc. The pesticides, chlorpyrifos, and organophosphates, which obviously are neurotoxins, henceforth endocrine disrupting chemicals. Methods utilized, well, they base the damage on 2010 figures, as you can see here. Obviously, being 2016, those healthcare costs may have increased just a little. However, keep in mind, the author said this is the low end. When they say 340 billion, which you're about to see, per annum, or 2.3% of the GDP, that is the lower end of the rest of it. Findings, as stated, as I just said a few seconds ago, 340 billion in cost per year due to the damage to humans, people, your family members, that these endocrine disrupting chemicals do, or I should say 2.33% of that GDP as once stated. The difference was driven mainly by intelligent quotient IQ point loss and intellectual disability due to polybrominated diphenol ether. That's just one of them, which resulted in 11 million I resulted, continues to result in an average of an 11 million IQ point loss per year, as well as an additional 43,000 cases of intellectual disability every single year until we actually do something about it. Not even talking about premature deaths and things like that, as you'll see more in a second. Pesticides resulted, obviously, another 1.8 million IQ point drop, as well as an additional 7,500 cases of intellectual disability. And as you can read this additional note, that is the low end of the scale. To look at this chart, which unfortunately is primary economic, not necessarily on a human level, if you look at it, neurological cost, that 282, that means $282 billion per year annually, that basically that's costing uh, the country. Again, not taking it down to an individual scale. Then neurological conditions also include autism caused by these endocrine disrupting chemicals, as well as ADHD, endometriosis, and fibroids. Of course, the effect hormones, of course, are gonna cause these issues. Premature deaths, about 10,700 per year. If there were jets that crash as opposed to chemical exposure, uh, you would see a national outcry pretty darn fast. But since it's quiet and silent, it sneaks up on you, uh, unfortunately, that tragedy is not as relevant, uh, or I should say obvious in the beginning. That's just your, your chart. Right, but otherwise, as you look more and more into detail, it goes as follows, pushing the chart aside. The annual PDB exposure, as we said, accounted for 11 million lost IQ points in children, in addition to 43,000 cases of intellectual disability. Keep in mind that was just one to repeat. All right, going past the pesticides at 1.8 million lost in IQ points and 7,500 more cases of disability each year due to the pesticide. The question you really gotta ask is whether these chemicals 
uh, which are already known. It's not a question whether they, they cause human suffering or not. The real question really is how much human suffering is acceptable uh, in order to have these chemicals in the environment. What good do these chemicals do for society? Or are they just there for convenience? You know, if they're there just for convenience, then how many people on a personal level have to be damaged or casualties of our own basically desire or just laziness about finding better solutions or answers? Until then, the research basically is basically say eat clean, don't microwave plastics and things along those lines. But you know, if you think about it, even eating an organic, yeah, you know, you'll have some media pundits say, oh my gosh, this is kind of snobby, it's organic food. But reality, by controlling the market forces and eating organically, you're encouraging the market to use less pesticides. By using less pesticides, you are helping individuals, which may not even realize, like farms next to schools that go organic and things like that, you can, in a way, be doing a lot of good. And of course, living as clean as possible by creating market forces that drive manufacturers to use less, you're kind of like not waiting for the government to get involved because in reality, the government, uh, not really great at getting things done. Again, hope you find this information useful and doctrine disrupting chemicals, major, major, major drain on the intellectual capacity of the United States every single year. And it'll continue to get worse until something actually gets done. If not by the government, then hopefully by you and I. Again, this is Ralph Turchiano signing off, and I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Catch you then. Bye.